Next on Done in a Weekend Extreme Projects, take your hardscaping up a level with this boulder retaining wall build. I'm landscape designer Doug Scott. Having partnered with Xmark over the last several years on their hugely popular Done in a Weekend Projects videos, we thought it was time to kick these cost and labor friendly DIY projects up a notch in an effort to help you create the outdoor living spaces and experiences you've always dreamed of. Welcome to the all new Done in a Weekend Extreme Projects series. Does your yard slope or does a grade change to the point where it makes it difficult for you to do what it is that you wanna do in your yard? If so, you're in luck, because today we're talking about boulder retaining walls. Not only do boulder retaining walls functionally level out a space, they do it beautifully by really increasing the visual appeal of a space by using natural products. Well, today we're excited to be joined by Holly Brooks and her crew from King Landscaping. I'm especially excited because Holly and I are friends and worked together for years, so it's really cool to be on site with her today. Holly, good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you, Thanks Doug. for letting Thanks us be for here. Thanks for being out. Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about today's project? Sure. So today we're building a boulder wall. Okay. So we have a 45-foot long wall, roughly. Uh, we'll have some steps in the center. All right. Um, and we're going to try and keep that wall height right at about 29, 30 inches okay. so that we, uh, so we have fall protection. Let's get started, but I can't wait to um, see how this thing turns out in a week or so. Thanks, well, can't wait to have you back. Yeah, cool, let's go. All right, so it looks like you've already gotten started. Tell us what you've done so far. Well, we started with uh, marking out where our wall's gonna go and excavating where we're cutting the base of the wall into okay. the grade. Okay. Um, this particular job, we don't have a whole lot of base work to do because right. we're building the grade up artificially behind it. But this is our footing. We're going to get started here. All right, Holly, so we have marked it off. We have excavated it. Is there anything we need to do to prep the ground before we start laying anything on top of it? Yeah, so you want to be sure, sure that your footing is is real solid, what you're building on is real solid. Okay. So, you know, with this wall, we didn't have to put in any compactable material, but you might have to bring in something like a crush and run and compact the base before okay. you lay your base course of your wall. Okay, any equipment needed to tap that down or is it? You can use a hand tamper, you can run over it with the track of the machine, okay. you can do a lot of things, but, um, you know, a, even a plate tamper, it really depends on the height of the wall. All right, so the ground is, is set. What's the first thing you do as far as the actual build? Well, our wall has steps. Okay. So we started with the steps, and, and the reason you do that is because the top step, of course, sets your top of wall elevation, uh, right? Okay. So makes sense. if you don't have steps, you can just start at one end and build to the other. But uh, we started with the steps, and then we'll take the wall from there. And these steps, are they like your typical like rise and run? Absolutely, so you wanna be as close to a six inch rise or seven inch rise as you can um, and consistently through all the steps. Okay. And that's the same with an interior step. So you don't trip or... Exactly. All right, so we have the steps down. We can go up and down from space to space. Now the wall itself, what are the steps there? So you start with the bottom of the wall, obviously, and yep. build up from there. Okay. And so that, that base run of the wall goes in, starting to layer on top of that with your second and third. And you are using soil in between to kind of help stabilize and level the rocks. You're trying to keep each course level with the horizon. Okay. All right, and then you're also stepping each rock back behind the one underneath it so that the wall actually leans back into okay. this, the grade. This is a dry laid boulder wall, but if you were to be taller, um, you know, if you're gonna get into some of the taller walls, you would definitely wanna use mortar. Or if you know that like say kids are gonna be playing near it and walking across the top of it, you might wanna mortar in that top. Now what about drainage? So as the water comes up from on top of the wall, toward the wall, you wanna make sure that it doesn't just sheet flow over the wall because that would, under, you know, it would land right. and undermine the base of the wall. So right. we wanna make sure that we, behind the wall, cut in just a very gentle swale. It really isn't even perceptible to the eye with as flat as we're gonna have our grade here. Okay. But if you have a slope coming down, you would want a pretty pronounced swale so that your water pitches to either side instead of sheet flowing over the top of the wall.
All right, so while you guys are finishing things up, why did you choose boulder wall? Why would somebody want a boulder wall versus some other kind of retaining wall? So there's actually lots of reasons. In this case, the foundation of the little structure that we're building up to yep. is also stone. And okay. so it kind of marries with that. From a cost perspective, a boulder wall is actually a very cost-effective way to do a, a, you know, manage a grade change. The cool thing about boulder walls is that they, with these mud joints that we have, you know, lots of ferns and things volunteer in okay. there. So you get kind of this growth and mossy old look to a wall okay. very quickly. Why would I choose not to use a boulder wall? So if you're going to be building a wall that's over 30 inches tall, okay. you really need a, a rail across the top of it. And a boulder wall... With a rail kind of looks strange. It does, and it also structurally, you would need to, uh, you can't drill into the top of a boulder wall. You'd need okay. to set the rail behind the wall quite a bit. Boulder rolls are awesome, but not always the right choice. Not always the right choice, okay. but in this case, for sure. Well, I'm back on site with Holly, and I cannot believe that this is the same space. I mean, this boulder retaining wall not only leveled things out and made it more usable, with a mix of the boulders and the Linton roses and the ferns, it did it in such a beautiful, natural way. Great job, Holly. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm sure the homeowner is thrilled. They are, they are. Awesome, we'll get back to it. I will, thanks. thanks. Well, Holly and I and our friends at Xmark really hope that this video has helped you better understand how you can really improve the use of your outdoor spaces with the addition of a boulder retaining wall and do it in a beautiful, natural way. Again, I want to thank Holly and her crew for letting us be with them this week, and I want to remind you to check us out at xmark.com backyard for more done-in-a-week-and-extreme project ideas. Take care. <laughs>